The cycle repeats itself. Man United somehow go and beat title contenders Aston Villa midweek and we go and lose to Nottingham Forest tonight. It's an absolute disgrace. And that loss is on Eric Ten Hag. It's just like the Chelsea game all over again. We know what happened. We won the game. The following game, we lose it. And it's just the same today. Man United, we, it, we've lost five games in December. That's the first time we've done that since 1933. It's an absolute joke. And I am now on the verge of Eric Ten Hag out because at the end of the day, what is it that he's going to do at this point? It's just inconsistency. It's the players. It's the tactics. He would teach. Eric Tanag took off Mainu today for a tactical change for Scott McTominay. And then what happens? This tactical change was to put Ericsson and Bruno Fernandes as our defensive players in a pivot and make Scott McTominay the number 10 or second striker type player. Like, what was he thinking? All season long, Scott McTominay has offered nothing but scoring goals. And he understand, but at half time, it was still nil nil. And look what happens. We go and lose the game because there's no defensive cover in the midfield. The midfield got completely outrun once again. Are you Eric Ten Hag out? Because at the moment, I don't know how I feel at the moment. I'm honest, honestly on the verge of being Eric Ten Hag out. I did say the other week that if, if, if we lose to Villa and Nottingham Forest, I will be Eric Ten Hag out. I am now on the verge because if we lost to Villa, you know, you'd be like, all right, we expect it, but we should be beating Nottingham Forest. I don't give a shit about the whole new manager bounce and all that stuff. We, we, like, we got a, an extra... 10 minutes added on in the second half which was bullshit it was it wasn't even like five minutes was deserved but we could still be playing now we could be still playing for another hour we could be playing till midnight we would have not scored there was chances yes that Bruno Fernandes to make the, t uh, the turn a save yes very decent save but it was lucky deflection at the same time but it was another embarrassing performance and it needs to change I don't think that when Martinez, when Mason Mount, when Casemiro all come back, it's going to change the way we play football. It might do, but at the moment with the way I see the players currently playing, it's not going to anytime soon. And January, it well, obviously this is our last game before 2024. Happy New Year to everyone, by the way. But at the end of the day, we go into 2024, what is it, 6th, 7th place now? I have no idea, but at the end of the day, it's a game that we needed to win. Like the Premier League this season, this is why I think Eric Tag's not going to get sacked, by the way, because we've now played eight, we've played 19 to 20 games, every single team in the Premier League, right? And what's happened is that you've currently got Liverpool and Villa sitting up top with 42 points, right? Normally, in majority of the seasons, you'd have teams in mid 50s with points, tight like pro 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 proper title contenders. And this is how difficult it's been this season. There's such a low points tally that the fact that the leading team in the Premier League has 42 points and it's joint first with third and fourth with 40 points. It's going to be a very close league this year. So this is why I feel like Eric Tenag hasn't been sacked because you know there is still a possibility for top four to happen. But we can't be letting like these are the games we need to be winning to keep up with the likes of Villa, to keep up with the the teams like Man City and Liverpool and Arsenal. Like, and understand there's, there's fifth place now to get European football for Champions League, it's the playoffs, whatever it is. But in the, the day, we should be competing for top four. We saw what we did last season, so where is that this season? I understand we've got an injury crisis, but so does every other team. Newcastle are struggling, Tottenham are struggling, so we should be capitalising on that with a good with the good and quality we do have in our current team that is available and we should be capitalising it and competing for top four. But what are we doing? We're sitting back and we're just letting it happen. And these tactical decisions that Eric Tenag's making are costing us games. Mainly was having a great 45 minutes, but I understand that Eric Tenag wanted to take a risk. But if you want to take a risk, take off Bruno Fernandes or Ericsson. You don't, if you want to bring on Scott McTominay, you don't take off the only holding midfielder that's in our team. Like, Amrabat's gone off to a finger. Um, what, the AFCON now? Like, so is uh, Onana, possibly. So, what's going to happen there? That's also a terrible bit of business, by the way, with the likes of Amrabat. We brought him in on loan, and we're paying for his wage, majority of his wages. I think it was like 70% of wages we're paying for Andre, for um, Amrabat. And he's gone to the AFCON for one or two months, however long the Morocco are going to be in the competition for. That's great business by Man United. You know, it's it's ridiculous. Now, I understand he was a panic signing. We didn't actually want him. He was just a body because of the amount of injuries we had. But at the end of the day, it's still a terrible bit of business. I can guarantee there's probably a better 
like there's a better holding midfield of an Amrabat available for loan or available for a short transfer. You know, it was it's just a terrible bit of business again by Man United. And Sergio Ratcliffe, no doubt at some point when it is confirmed and it is all official, I mean, it's already all confirmed and official, but when the January transfer window opens, no doubt we'll get so many transfer rumours, so many transfer talks, you know, like negotiations, everything will go through the roof because Sam Jim is apparently investing into Man United in January. So we're going to see if he's going to be a competent shareholder or not, if he actually does want to make United compete for top four and trophies. But in the end of the day, talking about the game, you know, Nuno, you know, it is the new manager bounce. You know, Nuno did really well. We just didn't look like scoring. Nottingham Forest weren't very good today because we don't have a lot of quality. We do have some decent plays. You know, your Morgan gives White, Anthony Alanga. And apart from them, I can't really think of any like, standout players that really threaten me. You know, that uh, Dominguez, whatever he's called, he scored today. But, but again, if that was in the second half because there was no one tracking him. And that's where taking off Mainu really affected our game and what has cost us in tonight's game. The fact that we're sat here seeing that taking off Kobe Mainu for Scott McTominay, an 18-year-old, the fact that we've took him off, who's a player who's supposed to be, be nurtured into this team and supposed to be gaining a lot of experience, taking him off the pitch is what cost us today's game. How crazy is that? The fact that Mainu is now a reliance from the fan base because he changes the game and he's better than the likes of Scott McTominay and Amrabat. I think it's an absolute joke because we should be nurturing Kobe Mainu into this team. But at the end of the day, how are we going to, like, what we've got? We've not got a week yet until our next game, which is against Wigan. I swear to God, if we lose that, I will be Eric Tanag out. I don't care if he rotates, I don't care if he keeps the same team. He needs to win that because that's the only trophy we've got left. We're out the Carabao Cup, we're out any European competition, we're not winning the Premier League. So if Eric Tanag wants to keep his job alive, if we lose to Wigan, I know it's away, but if we lose to Wigan, I will be Eric Tanag out. I do not care because, like, we should be playing Wigan and putting out the second team, you know, your Mason Mounts, your Ahmad Diallos, you know, Anthony Martial, you know, whoever, you know, give everyone else a run out. But the amount of injuries we've got, Eric Tag's probably going to go with the strongest 11 or whoever's available. Maybe Mason Mount might play, Rasmus Hoyland if he's not available. But even in this game, Rasmus Hoyland wouldn't have made any difference, you know, hardly any service to Rashford. But even when the goal that Rashford scored, it was a brilliant but it was brilliant from Alejandro Ganacho. The fact that he read that that situation to intercept the ball from Matt Turner and pass it to Rashford. Well, Rashford had so much space in the box and he moved himself to the left, which is his favourite hand side. Rashford said himself on Gary Neville's overlap that he doesn't like playing through the middle and he hates playing on the right. The left hand side is his best position and we're still not playing him on the left. It's ridiculous. Ganacho played brilliant on the right against Villa midweek. So. Who are you going to play through the middle? I don't know. Maybe play Bruno Fernandes as a false nine or something like that. It was a joke. And maybe compact to the midfield of Ericsson, Diallo and... Uh, sorry, um, Ericsson, Kobe Mainu and McTominay. Maybe do that and have Bruno Fernandes as a false nine and keep Rashford and Ganacho on the flanks. But at the end of the day, the game's over and done with now. On to 2024. Hopefully we can do something. But right now, if Eric Tanag... I'm on the verge of him being Eric Tanag out because this is an absolute joke. We shouldn't be losing this game. Nottingham Forest are a decent team, but they also have been struggling. And that's why they sacked the manager. I don't even know what he's called at this point. But Nuno, for the win that he got, fair play to him. It is what it is. But just like Wolves, just like Spurs, you'll get sacked eventually, mate. But will he get sacked before Eric Tanag? Probably, uh, not probably, Eric Tag will probably get sat before him. But anyway, thank you for watching. Leave a like on the video. Subscribe if you are new. Thank you so much for reaching 1,000 subscribers as well. An absolute dream of mine. So yes, on to 2K, on to 10K. We know it. We're on the road to be gaining more and more subscribers. So subscribe if you are new. But anyway, happy 2023, everybody. You know, have a great new year. We'll be posting it throughout the new year as well. Update with all the transfer news, all the rumours, everything. Stay tuned to Red Devils TV for all the latest news. Thank you for watching and have a good new year.